aid. But they say, but the Quran say that you fight even the people of the book until they pay the poll tax, jizya, while they are subdued, and some even people say humiliated. You get a number of errors here. First, what is the historical context? Does it say that Muslims are obligated to fight all people of the book in the world until they come under the rule of Islam and they pay the poll tax and be humiliated or subdued? The historical context is well known and that's totally ignored by people who write about these issues. The historical context is that Islam was in great danger and the Muslim community, the budding, the nascent community was in great danger both from within the hypocrites as well as elements that were hostile to Muslims even in the Arabian Peninsula. Some of the tribes in Medina that betrayed Muslim and cooperated with the enemies at the time of war which we call today high treason and harassed Muslim and undermined their religion by all means they can. The tribes in the northern part of Arabia because of their proximity to Byzantine Empire some of them were accepted Christianity, especially the Ghassanites or Ghassasna. And these people showed a great deal of aggressiveness and antagonism towards Muslims to the point that they committed an act that is regarded today as an act of war. They killed the messenger sent by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to peacefully invite them to Islam. So when the ayah and the surah is dealing in, and again it's surah 9, in that context of enmity, the Byzantians who gathered a huge army in Tabuk, which is now in the northern part of Saudi Arabia, to weigh, weigh, you know, whip or to remove Islam totally from existence. This is the circumstances where the necessity to defend that community from those great danger would be to fight to subdue them to stop the possibility of attack against the Muslim community. But then, there is a big misconception about the question of jizya. Some people think that jizya is punishment for a person who did not accept Islam, the pearl tax, or at best a bribe, that when you become a Muslim you will not pay the jizya. They are mistaken on both grounds. In fact, if a, Muslim, if a non-Muslim under the rule of Islam accept Islam, he will have greater financial obligations because he would be required to pay zakah, he would be required to pay zakatul fitr, uh, according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, you would be required to pay additional sadaqah even if needed, or taxes, and voluntary sadaqah. So that you're not escaping, you'd be, be paying more even. And then some people mistranslate the Quran also. An yadin. They think an yadin means humiliated. On the contrary, as Imam Shafi explained, an yadin means ability. In the Arabic language, yad, like they say, al yadul uliya khayur min al-yad. Yad actually is a symbol of ability that means as Muslim scholars interpreted, that you cannot impose jizya on a woman, a child, an old man, a person who's poor. It, he must be able to pay that poll tax. But what is the purpose of poll tax then? In Islamic law, all citizens, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, are entitled to state services, to social security, and they're not obligated to serve in the Muslim army, obligated, because it might contradict their feeling because there is a religious connotation. So there is defense benefit also involved in that. Some people might say, why isn't the secular system better? Why did, didn't Muslims in the past say to non-Muslims, you pay zakah equally with your Muslim brothers and sisters? But they miss one point. People think of zakah only as tax in the secular sense. Whereas for the Muslim, and for those who know about Islam living with Muslims among non-Muslims, that the uh, zakah is not just a tax, it has a religious connotation, and you must have heard about the pillars of Islam, one of which is charity. Actually, it is more respect of the religious sensitivities to say don't pay zakah, which is religious, pay the equivalent, pay jizya. And by the way, some scholars like Dr. Abdul Karim Zaidan, in an excellent book about the rights of non-Muslims under Islamic State, he made it clear that this is, a, this is not a religious duty on Muslim to have jizya. If in the judgment of an Islamic government they want to apply another system, it is not really a must. And then finally, the biggest misunderstanding. 
they don't understand that the word sagirun actually in Arabic could yes mean humiliated but has another important meaning referred to by Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah one of the great scholars of Islam sagirun here means accepting the authority of the Islamic State but let me ask you that question when you make your tax return before April 1st and when you pay tax to the Canadian government you have the same sagar you're admitting the authority of Canadian government to impose tax on you, don't you? The same thing, sagirun, that means accepting the legitimacy of the Islamic government under whose protection they are living.